Finally and officially, Fumora 14 is here. Hello everyone, Alex here from Alex Series, and today I am so excited to reveal this long awaited newest update of Fumora 14. And without wasting much of your time, let's start off by helping those who may not know how to upgrade to this latest version. Well, when you go to this option right here, which is the help tab, you are going to see this option which is check for new updates. And right here of course if you are using any of the previous versions you are going to see the new SC update which is Fumora 14 popping up and asking you to update. In case that doesn't work for you, use the link in the description of this video to go on to the official website of Wondershare Fumora. And once you are here you can select this option right here to download the installer. And right on from there, follow all the steps and Fumora 14 is going to be installed in your computer. Now when you launch your Wondershare Fumora, you are going to see that it's almost the same as the previous version Fumora 13 but just a few things have been added right here. Well right here you can see the project aspect ratios being shown right here allowing you to choose the resolution even before you start the project. And right here you can see all these are the newest features which are lined up over here. Well, 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 having all that out of the way, let's move on to the exciting features of Fumora 14. Starting off with the elephant in the room, this is a multi-camera editing feature. This is going to allow you to seamlessly edit footage from multiple camera angles on a single timeline track. And let us see how does it work. After the shoot of your multi-camera angle project, you import a thing of course, right here I don't have those video clips, but I have these three video clips right here which I'm going to use to explain and as an example, okay? Now I can actually select all of them right here like in this way and then after that I right select and use this option right here which is create a multi-camera clip, okay? And right here you have to name it. Alright, so this option below right here is going to allow you to sync both or all of your clips if you have more than two. Like for this example right here, I, I don't have the same audio on these clips because I'm just using them as an example. Okay, so I'm going to use this second option right here, not the audio syncing method, but if you have the audio, the same audio on all of your, on all of your clips, then you can use the first option which is the audio way to sync all of the clips and right here i'm not going to create the proxies okay then i do okay now your thing right here is going to look like a compound clip and indeed it is a compound clip because when you select it over here or else you can use uh, uh, let me go back home or else you can use this option right here then you can see this titled is a compound clip interview first session right select right here and here you have opened a common clip but this is nothing to do with the how you are going to use this feature all right let me show you how you do it go back to the main timeline right here and then over here what you're supposed to do is having this common clip selected okay you're going to see above your preview this option right here which is switch to multi-camera view all right so when you select it over here you're going to see this kind of a look all right so so now uh, move back your player to the very first frame where where your common clip is starting it all right so now when you play this preview you are going to be selecting any of these three right here as a way of switching to another camera angle okay now let me play right here so the video is playing for right now i can actually shift to and as you can see there's a change here and then to angle number three back to one just changing around you know this is how you do it as, and as you can see right here, everything that I'm clicking on the left side of the preview is showing up on the right side. The right side is the final output that is going to show up. But now the left is, you know, how where you edit. I think this is very, very useful, my dear friends. Now let's move on. This is the planner tracking feature in Fumora. 
Well, almost like the motion tracking, but there are just a few things that are different, okay? If in your video selected, go on to the AI tools and right down here, you are going to see this feature, which is the planner tracking. Well, there are two options right here, the simple or the, the auto and the advanced well let's see how does the auto work so right now you can actually direct it where and which exactly is the portion that you want to track so now the very first difference that we are seeing right here is that planner tracking is able to track a whole and a large surface comparing to the motion tracking that could only trace a certain particular point and also the other thing that i like right here is that this the, select, the selection is very flexible when it comes to perspectives. So it doesn't matter how, even it's a hole or a side thing, you know, you can actually adjust it accordingly. And now you can start the tracking and then it starts the tracking, okay? Oh, I'm noticing something right here. As you can see, while it's, it's, it's tracking, okay, you can see that it's missing the tracking. Look right here, it's actually missing the tracking. So I think maybe this is the difference between the auto and the advanced, all right? So we will see that in a minute, okay? And now select this option right here, and then you are going to see a few options right here. You can actually add a mosaic, you know, this option was already there on the motion tracking, but now this new option right here that you can actually import something that you want to fit on this face right here from your computer, okay? So now as you can see right here that the imported video clip is going to be you know aligned according to the perspective of the selection that is over here all right so uh, i think this is cool oh, oh oh it's wobbling around oh i think yeah, let's check out the advanced side okay so as you can see right here there are a few more options uh, to use over here uh, low accuracy default or high i think i need to choose the high for this kind of a video because it was actually wobbling around on the auto tracking okay so let me choose the high and before you go to the element you have to to do the analyzing okay now you can look right here on the analyze uh, you have the tracking options you can actually track forward through to through or you can check just one frame forward and you can use it for the opposite functions on the phase two okay now i set up the selection area uh and then once i'm done setting up the selection area here then i can move on to track forward using this option here now this is far much better but there's still a, a slight wobbling around and moving off the target but actually i think this the blame is on the video that i'm doing that you know if the video is much more visible and trackable you know you can get the high quality result but as you can see right here my dear friend this is a very very wonderful feature of Fimora 14 well my dear friends let's move on to the keyframing feature all right which has been added in Fimora and it's it's alternatively called the path tracking but i would like to call it the keyframing update because there is a lot changes about the keyframing actually and there is a lot also to explain so i'm not going to explain everything right away i'm going to give you another video explaining this keyframing update fully but now let us see the basics of it on the transform table right here you are going to see this option which is the path cave okay uh and you are going to find out that it's invisible until you add a keyframe all right and now you can actually see that the path cave is visible to be activated all right now what i'm calling the keyframing update is uh, usually in few more than or in the previous versions you would see a keyframing panel showing up over around this area but in this case we don't have that which you have to right select the video on its own and then you can open this option right here which is to show the keyframe animations or you can just simply use the outer shift and k to open it as shown here all right so right now you can see that the whole transform tab is brought down to the timeline oh oh my friends a lot of fun to explain you know 
Uh, other people were saying, why is it that they are removing the keyframing panel over here? It was far much simple and easier and, you know, actually convenient to a lot of projects, you know, than to put it right in the, in the, in the timeline. But uh, everything is, it's, uh, it's right side and maybe uh, the disadvantage, you know, but I think there's nothing wrong. There's nothing much wrong. Uh, what I'm going to do actually is to create for you a full guide video actually on this particular keyframing thing here okay but for now let me just show you this the path cave here now when you select it over here or let me just remove this since i'm not going to explain it right now and then shift outer and k i think the path is selected over here and then you can add a keyframe on this frame okay now if you move your frame are a few frames after and then you move from the preview screen and then you move your video that you're animating okay you're going to see the max right here which is the path you know a path just showing you that how did the keyframe go you know this is how it's, it's defined as the path curve curve path you can exchange the words just to to get the right meaning out of it okay the path is going to show exactly how was the video even keyframed that's uh, the purpose of the path you know just to show the path of the animation all right so having that said if you are watching this video at least four days after it was published then you can actually check this video link that is showing up right here to check out uh, the full guide about the keyframe in Fimora 14 everything that has changed and how to do it in a very very correct way okay so now let's move on to the following feature right here and this is the magnetic timeline uh, a very very interesting feature okay let's check it out this is how the magnetic timeline works normally when you have these kind of clips in your timeline you can actually move the clips around and if you have done that by mistake you are going to suffer for that mistake okay but now if you have the magnetic timeline feature here turned or activated you know when you try to move this around right here like you move it right here, it still snaps back to the other clip right here like in this way the way you are seeing right here all right and now this other option right here which is on the next having this feature activated you can actually move only this one and then the overlays will be moved as well now moving on to the very following right here my dear friend we have this one which is called the color palette all right color palette presets well this is almost like the the color match in Fumora 13 and even the previous episode i mean the previous version which is Fumora 12 we had the color match but this one right now is quite a little more advanced than the color match okay this allows you to take it can be a video clip or a certain movie scene okay that you want to replicate the color grading theme okay you can just use this feature right here you know to match that particular scene for your own project well this is how it works when you have your clip selected in the timeline like in this way right here you know you can go to the color table here and then on the color table you are going to see a uh, uh, scroll a little down you know yeah you're going to find out the ai color palette all right so right here you're going to do is as you can see right here i already when i was testing this feature i actually put my own preset color palette here which is this one that you are seeing right here if it's your first time to open it you can use this option right here which is the add to actually add your own so when you select this option right here you see something like this okay so actually right here you can move using this playhead which is over here you see that if you move it around it moves you along the timeline uh, of your project that you are working on right now so you can actually find the frame that you want to copy the color theme you know or else uh, the second option is that you can go to the local file right here and then you can import uh, it can be a movie scene just as i have said earlier or a certain particular thing you know even an image can work right in this instant okay well this time around i've imported a video and then now since it's a video again that you can move around 
know the timeline of this video but if it was an image there's no way there's no reason for you to move around the plate like what i'm doing right now so what does that mean is that if you find a frame that you want to copy you know then you can generate A preset palette is going to be added over here and then now when you are color grading your file you can just select a palette like in this way here okay and then you can increase or reduce the strength alongside with this protect skin tones feature which is over here that is going to help to keep the skin tones without much uh, being affected with the, the palette okay well my dear friends this is uh, the color palette for you but i really wouldn't say this is a it doesn't look like the ai thing to me but it's, it's it's called the ai color palette and that being said my dear friend take note that i have decided to separate the ai tools from the normal features that have nothing to do with ai so in the part two be sure to catch up with that we are going to check out all the features that have to do with ai and that will be the part two of few more 14 features and this video right here my dear friend is most likely the part two but if it's not then you can watch this video that is showing up over here my dear friend so that you can actually compare what Filmora promised us a couple of months ago all those promises and compare it with what they've actually delivered in the actual Filmora 14 because in this video I explained everything that Filmora had said back then that they are going to do for us in Fumora 14 and now Fumora 14 is here it's time to compare the thing if you want to watch that this video is ready for you here